Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster Alexandre Kustinyu and I'll come in for you as the second game of the 8th of final of the Women's World Chess Championship in Nalchik in 2008. I'm playing with black pieces against Tatiana Kosintseva, also from Russia. In the first game I missed some very good opportunities and made a draw. So Tatiana started the game with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6 and for the second time in our match we play the real Lopez, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castle, bishop e7. And here Tatiana played d3, which is um, some kind of anti martial It's quite popular nowadays. There are many move orders. The main idea of this move is not let black play d5 and sacrifice the pawn on e5. So white is trying different moves, but the position remains about equal. So b5, bishop b3, castle, a4, bishop b7, rook e1. And here I played rook e8. To be honest, I prepared very well for this game and the position after the 17th move was on my board at home. So these moves were prepared at home, but uh, Tatiana didn't know that, of course. White has a lot of possibilities here, a lot of plans, such as a c3, d4, or knight c3, or knight b to d2. So uh, everything is possible, many games have been played. And after some thought, um, Tatiana opted for knight b to d2. I played bishop f8. You can notice that I don't play d6 for the moment because I hope to play d5 uh, later. So I want to win a tempo to play d5 in one move instead to play d6 and then d5. So uh, she played knight f1. I played knight a5, bishop a2. And here I played d5, which I think was a novelty that I prepared at home, because uh, normally people played h6 or d6. The idea of this move is that white cannot really take on e5, she uh, will not win the pawn on e5, because for example, if she takes on b5, I'll take on b5, and here after e takes d5, I have knight takes d5 and the main idea of my novelty is that after knight takes e5 I have a very nice move which is knight b3 and then after c takes b3 I can play uh, knight b4 threatening to play the bishop to take the bishop on a2 and at the same time I opened my bishop on b7 so I want to play queen d5 uh, it's of course with the help of the computer I uh, found this interesting variation. But at the game after d5, Tatiana uh, played, uh, decided not to take on e5 and she just played uh, knight g3, a stand uh, standard kind of move in this uh, position. I played h6 in order not to let her play bishop g5 somewhere. She played bishop d2, b4 e takes d5, bishop takes d5. Of course I want to exchange the light, uh, the white squared bishop normally in the Rui Lopez pawn structures is very strong. Bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, and here at home I was looking at the variation starting with the move queen e2, knight c6, uh, knight e4, knight d7. And that's how I finished my analysis, I thought that my position is uh, very good since I play with black. Maybe I have a small advantage here. But uh, Tatiana, instead of uh, queen e2, she played here b3. So that was my turn to think. After a while, I uh, decided to consolidate my position and I played rook a to d8. I think my position is a little bit better. Uh, I have more space, it seems. Tatiana played uh, bishop e3. Actually, she chose uh, uh, the wrong plan, because after bishop e3, knight g4, her idea was to, to, to play a knight d2, and she just gave away the bishop. And as we know, in um, a lot of positions, a bishop is stronger than a knight, and I think this kind of position where my bishop is stronger than a knight. So I took on e3, f takes e3, queen e6, queen f3, g6 
Uh, of course, I don't want to let her knight to go to f5 or h5. That's I uh, played this prophylactic move. She played e4. I played queen c6. It's a very nice idea to play probably rook e6 to f6 or rook d6 to f6. And also her pawn on c2 is hanging. So she gave, she gave away the bishop, but if my bishop will go from c5 to d4 and then I will use my rooks, it will be very difficult for white to do anything. So she played rook f1. When she played bishop e3, knight d2, and when she let me take on e3, she hoped that after f takes e3, the f file, which opens after this exchange, will let her create some threats to my king. That's why she played like this. But unfortunately for her, after rook d7, I'm protecting the pawn on f7, and after queen g4, rook e6, my rooks and queen are protecting my king's side very well, and she cannot really do something special after that. And so her position is just a little bit worse. But uh, here again, she played knight c4. She just helping me because after knight takes c4, my knight, which was not ideally placed on a5, is just exchanging. And after d takes c4, she didn't want to take with the b pawn because her a4 pawn will be weak. The d file is open, and so it's open for my rook. So I played rook d2. Again, I want to take on c2. It's a permanent headache with this pawn. She uh, all the time needs to think about it, needs to protect it, and she cannot really do that because if she plays rook c1, for example, my bishop will become very strong. She played uh, rook f3 instead with the idea to play rook a to f1, and that's why I exchanged one pair of rooks. I played rook f6, and after rook a to f1, I took an f3, uh, queen takes f3, queen d7, protecting the pawn on f7, it's difficult to suggest something to white. Little by little, with uh, small mistakes, my position just became better. So here she played h3, giving away the pawn on c2. I took on c2, rook d1, bishop c5 check, king h2, rook d2, rook takes d2, queen takes d2. And here, generally speaking, my position is won, but since in the first game I didn't win in an absolutely winning position here, I wanted to be precise till the very end, so I was a little bit nervous since I still remembered what happened the day before. So she played knight e2, bishop e3, a very nice idea because actually white cannot do anything. I just want to win the second pawn. Just to take on b3 after queen d3, h4, h5, g3, and here we go, I play queen d3. Tatiana tried to, to create some uh, threat on the king side because it's her only chance. She played g4, I took on b3, king g2, I took on g4, queen takes g4, queen takes c4, h5, I just protected the pawn. King g7. Uh, here, a very nice idea. She played knight g3, but after uh, h takes g6, my idea was to play f5. She cannot take with the queen, since I'll take the knight on e2, and she also cannot take with the pawn, since, since her um, queen is hanging on g4. And so after queen h5, I'll just take on e4, winning the game. So in the game, she played uh, knight g3. And I remember that here I spent, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes trying to calculate everything till the very end to be sure 100% that I will win this game and I will not miss again some um, contra ch chances. So I played queen c2, check, her only move is king h3, bishop f4, h take g6, and here again. I calculated and recalculated and and finally I played queen d3 since after g takes f7 king takes f7 queen h5 check king e7 queen h4 check my king goes away from checks king d7 queen g4 check king c6 and since my next move would be queen takes g3 or if she gives check on e6 or g6, I will just go to b7. Tatiana resigned and I uh, moved forward to the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm.